preppers. So today I am doing a meal prep. 30 days of freezer crock pot meals for five people prepped in one day. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. We'd love to have you join the family. I started this out by doing, trying to do like a diet on the new year. And it ended up that I, I paid like $400 for a month of preps. And then I got a text saying it doesn't include any of the meats. So kind of freaked out. And then last night, my hubby went and bought all the meat. So the, I decided to make a video of my entire month of meal preps because I was not aware that it was supposed to be for my entire family. I thought it was just for me and my diet. So I'm going to be filming it for you guys and doing an entire month of meal prep for my whole family, which is five people. We have a 22 year old and a 16 year old boy. So we have a lot of food that we're gonna be prepping today and I am just, this is just uh, some ground beef and I'm gonna show you the other meats that I got. So this is 40 pounds of chicken. We've got all the steak, like stew beef here. We've got pork and all of that here and then we've got chicken thighs. So we have a whole bunch of meat and I have to get it all chopped up today before we go to like a restaurant uh, with this whole group of people that's going to be doing all this meal prepping today. So literally this morning, me and my hubby are just going to go through and we're going to be chopping up all of this meat, putting it in bags, and then we're going to head to the restaurant where we're going to be prepping all of the food. So the first thing that I've got to do is kind of organize all the different meats that I have. And I really hope that none of these are... Like stick text that I got said 18 pounds of stew meat. So that is going to be this. And trust me, you guys, I was like freaking out when I got the text. So I am going to be making the best of the situation today. And I am going to look forward to having all of my meals prepped for the entire month. So I'm going to be telling you what we're using in all of the preps. I'm going to let you guys know how it goes and then anything else that I have in my fridge is actually going to be just dehydrated today and going to be put into food storage. There's the chicken thighs and then I've got a huge box that my hubby's going to have to get with the chicken and that's the one of the first things we're going to have to prep is our chicken breast. Okay, so I'm having him pull out this whole pound box of chicken from my fridge because it's just really heavy. And here we go, we're about to start the prep. Okay, so the first thing that we're doing is just starting out with prepping some of the beef because that's one of the main things that we have to chop up is a lot of beef. And so he's setting up me a station so that I can start working on chicken while he works on the beef. And the first thing I'm doing is just sharpening my knife because yeah, it's kind of hard to chop a lot of meat when you don't have a sharp knife. And then I found out that none of my chicken came trimmed that we got in the box. So I'm having to go through and kind of like trim my chicken as I go because, yeah, I definitely like to have my chicken kind of trimmed. And we're just kind of going through exactly what we need to have. And it's basically going to be um, a couple bags of the chicken chopped and then the rest are going to be just taken as breasts. But um I wanted to add the thighs to be chopped also. So my hubby is getting, he's really busting through this meat pretty quickly. And of course I am going at a snail's pace on my chicken, but I am getting through it. And these uh, chicken breasts were like actually huge. And so I don't know if that's gonna lead to my chicken being like extra watery or not being flavorful. I was like a little bit bummed when I saw how big the breasts were because that usually means that the chicken was like really injected with water, but whatever, I'm going to go with it. I am, hopefully it's going to be seasoned enough. And if I do try these meals and I find that I don't like how seasoned they are, I'm probably going to have to go in and season them a little bit more because I do like my food to be well seasoned. And part of the whole diet that I'm doing is really trying to eat just like a little bit cleaner and using less um, processed ingredients. I'm sure you can see my face. I really, really hate working with chicken. Like I can't stand doing chicken. I just don't like touching raw chicken. It totally grosses me out. So my whole entire face this entire time is just 
looking very, very like, oh, this is the worst for me. But I, I would rather work with the beef, but I just decided to go ahead and do the chicken because why not? He ends up like actually helping me at the very end with the chicken because it was like, I just, it just took me a really long time to do all the chicken that I had to do. But hey, we're getting it done, guys. So, you know, I'm trying to make sure that I'm portioning these out exactly just to make it a little bit easier because a lot of the recipes called for like one or two chicken breasts. So I'm really going to have to see kind of how this works out, to how it feeds my family because the lady who's doing this meal prep is a doctor and so like obviously she's a little skinnier and like I have three big guys so <laughs> we're gonna have to see how exactly this works out with feeding my family but we usually almost every day have everything with rice so I'm hoping that it does work out to be enough food especially with adding in these thighs um, I'm hoping that all of the food is gonna turn out to be the perfect amount and as you can see, I'm just basically taking the skin off and I'm just deboning my chicken thighs because I actually think chicken thighs taste super good in crockpot recipes. And so I think that adding these in will be, I kind of mixed them up on one of the recipes. So I did, I added in some of these chicken breasts with the chicken thighs and I think that it's going to turn out really good. Wow, I can't believe it. He's already done with all of the beef and I'm just working on the chicken thighs. He's so much faster than me at prepping meat. But that's also because he does, we do have a food truck and he literally does this all day every day. So he's way faster at cooking than I am. And that's one big reason why I decided to just go ahead and do this because the whole reason that I decided to start this thing to start with is because I wanted to make it easier for us all to have dinner together. So he is now getting, going through and trimming some of my chicken breasts. And right now he just kind of is having like, I don't know what happened, but he got super dizzy. So he ended up being okay. He just had like some sort of dizzy spell for a minute. So anyway, back to prepping. And we are just going through and he is trimming up all of these chicken breasts for me. And we're just putting them back into the bags. And as you can tell, it does take me kind of a long time to do this. But once we're getting all of these chickens back into the bag after they've been, been all prepped and everything, and I am actually keeping all of these bones because I actually am going to be making stock with these bones and skin and everything later. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with the skin of the chicken, but I decided just to save it and I can figure out something to do with the skin of the chicken later. So if you guys have any suggestions for what to do with the chicken skins. Um, I usually don't use them in my stock but I'm thinking that I might want to try something. I just don't really like throwing food away if I can help it. So usually I would have bought it without the skins already but I mean I did have some extras so I decided just to save it and see what I can do with it. And if worse comes to worse I guess I could just cook it and give it to my puppy or something. I don't know. here too with their coolers and then this is the the scene that we have in front of us this is all the different items that we are going to be prepping with there's actually a ton of items on the side that we're going to be using like the vegetables and everything these are just some of the cans of soup and pasta sauce and everything that we are going to be adding to the recipes Okay, so here's the... Like, I'm really gonna learn, damn it. 
You doing okay? Yeah. How did you do with your class? That's good. You made it? Yeah. That's good. Yeah? Good. good. Did you start your story? Yeah. How's the heading? Gas truck was completely... Okay, so here we go. We are doing the major meal prep. We are starting each meal prep with listing the name of the dish, the date, and what you have to add. So if you have to add four cups of water, then we're writing that on there. So each bag is labeled that way. And then we have this neat little device that holds our bags open while we do the prep, which I really like. Person got a recipe book and it also includes like a list of to do's like what we can eat what we can't eat um, just basically like a guidebook into like what you should be trying to eat like healthy foods to be eating and stuff like that so as you can tell we are using a lot of canned items so if you do have canned items at home this is a really cool way to prep for the month to help you rotate through your canned system so I think this is one really cool thing for preppers if, if you are worried about like if I'm really gonna use this items if it's gonna go bad I don't want to over prep and then my food go bad before I can eat it this is a great way to go through and use up some food and also get a whole month worth of meals done you can use whatever meat that you want to use pretty much like I could have used any meat that would have gone with the meal so you can use any meats that you have and you just make enough to put in the crock pot and add water and then put it into your freezer. So this is a pretty cool option if you do have a lot of canned foods and then also some fresh vegetables and you're just going to kind of mix them all together and then put them in the separate bags. And then we have a master list of all the different recipes and it's going to tell you, you know, exactly how long you're going to keep it in the crock pot for and then also how what other things you might want to eat with it, what things you might want to add when it com comes time to putting it in the crock pot, which is really cool. And I am using the world's smallest knife here. I literally chopped right into my finger and got a really big gash on it, so I had to like actually get a band-aid and everything, and then I went ahead and switched knives because this one was way too small for me to be working with, but <laughs> it's okay. And this is what a couple of the completed, more completed bags look like. This is an, an enchilada chicken bag. I think that this might be a really cool one for preppers to use because it obviously it just has corn and beans and chicken and spices. So this is one that I know a lot of preppers probably have. It uses a lot of beans that people obviously over prep. And then obviously some of that canned corn. This would be perfect for that. And we used frozen corn, so it really just depends on what ingredients you have and going through what you have in your pantry and just kind of spending some time to prep ahead of time. And this is kind of cool because it does free up a lot of time during the day for you to focus on other things. So if you're, or if you have a very large family and you do like to use a crock pot, it can also give you some leftovers and a chance to kind of, um, work through your own day at your own pace that's what i really like about this and since i never know exactly what time my husband's going to be getting home it's really nice to do it this way because then i'm always going to have something hot when he comes home and y'all we really had to rock and roll through these there was a lot of work that we had to do we were all at one table and we were just swapping ingredients Right now we're making a Thai dish, so I just grabbed some of the chicken breast that I had and I'm just going through and adding the right amount of chicken to each bag and then someone is coming through from the staff and adding the stuff like the lime juice and the salt and pepper and this is all while I'm cooking and adding different ingredients to each dish. And as you can tell, we're all pretty much working very well in tandem, um, trying to, you know, clean as we go and you know as we're working another person is cleaning the utensils and different items that we're using and we are just using we have a measuring cup for the table so each table has like different measuring cup items there were about six or eight different tables and this is one thing that I, was, I think is just really cool is like how the whole community can kind of come together and meal prep together 
I know that a lot of preppers can be kind of lone wolves, but you just have to remember that there is a whole community of people out there that are really trying to uh, provide really good food and keep their families safe and healthy. So just remember that sometimes it can be good to go and do something really cool like this with other people that live in your area because this is one fun way to get out and meet new people and kind of have fun and get to know other people, what they do, what their lives are like. We got to talk a lot through this whole process and it was really neat to meet other people. But at the same time, this was one of the hardest things that I have personally done. It was just so much work. And I definitely think that if you're doing this alone, it can be very hard. So getting your entire family involved in doing, a, if you're going to endeavor to do a monthly meal prep, it may not be something that you want to try to tackle alone until you work through that maybe a week or two weeks at a time. Because I really did have actually quite a bit of help throughout this whole process from other people in the room and everybody was kind of helping each other. So if I think if you're going to do this, you would want to involve, you know, your kids or your spouse in some way because me trying to do this, I was definitely the, sm the slowest person in the room. My kids were out snowboarding and my husband was taking care of the baby because we didn't have a sitter. So I actually winded up being one of the slowest. And we are finally done. And as you can see, I was literally the last one to finish up. So everybody's just kind of helping me. Thank you. Okay, you guys, so I just finished the meal prep and I have a couple of bags here of the vegetable scraps, which I can use for stock. These are all the different meals. Chicken dish here. This is chicken and rice, tomato chicken soup. This is a Thai peanut chicken. And gosh, I don't even know all the different things. This is a poor man soup. It's got ground beef in it, chicken enchilada soup, beef stroganoff, beef, beef tips. And these each feed six people. And so I prepped for an entire month and one afternoon. But coming up, we have probably one of the biggest hurdles we're gonna have all day. Yeah, how to get all of this food into our freezer. Otherwise, we're gonna have to start thawing some of the other stuff and cooking it in the next couple days because I don't even know what we're gonna do with it. How we're gonna add all this food to our freezer at this point. So somehow we got it all inside of our freezer. We did have to take out some food, which we're gonna probably move to a different freezer. And just like some tater tots and some beef and salmon and stuff. So we're gonna just have to move this one, but, and I did go ahead and put one in the crock pot for dinner tonight. So that's gonna be ready in about three and a half hours. Okay, what do you guys think? Would you prep for an entire month in a day? Let me know in the comments below.